and welcome to Gordonia Valley Church this Sunday the 24th of May. I'm speaking to you here from the Portishead Riviera. It is the holiday, thank you. It's a holiday destination of choice uh, this May. Mag holiday? Um, Hello, we got our tent up. We're having a sleepover out our garden but not in the camp place. And we got a nice garden and a trampoline over there has, and just like <laughs> yeah, thank you. You are so welcome. Whether this is your first time joining us here at GVC, whether you come uh, faithfully week in, week out, we are so pleased to have you worship with us today. Father God, we thank you for your world. We thank you for all the new life that's springing forward, all the tiny chicks that are popping out and the butterflies that are coming out of their chrysalises and flying around. We thank you for all the blessings you've given us, however big, however small. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our family right with us. We thank you for our family further away, sometimes right across the world. And we thank you for our church family. God, we thank you that you have placed us in such a loving community. And we pray that as we meet together, as we worship together, albeit virtually, that you would be with us. That you would hear us and you would smile your face upon us. Yeah. Um. Perfect. <laughs> so today we're continuing our world tour with updates from here in Bristol, from Hello. Romania, and further afield from the Middle East. So they're going to be coming up throughout the service. We're also sharing together the story of the wise and foolish builder. So we'll come on to that one in a minute, but I'm just gonna, we're just going to kick straight off with some worship. Yeah. 
for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you It's all about you Jesus I'm coming back to the heart of worship What it's all about you It's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I've made it But it's all about you It's all about Good morning, Simon David and the team at Haven Day Centre. That is, it's only me here, the rest of the team are out in the community supporting our special members. Usually we support 30 adults who we refer to as members who have additional needs, both here in the centre and we also transport them to and from their homes one or more days a week. As a result of the virus, those staff who are able to work are now supporting families and carers either within their houses, garden rooms or out walking or shopping with them where it is safe to do so. Some of those we support require close supervision. Two examples are one um, went to respite a week ago only on their first night had managed to leave the home and the police were called out to locate them. Another member who attends likes to touch people at bus stops or to jump on mopeds parked up. With fewer working staff I am still very busy, as my staff are, with dozens of extra emails to get through and papers to read too, and coordinating who receives what support on what days. We are missing our friendly teams who have helped us in the past, e.g. the Noise and Lloyds Bank, as they have visited year after year, helping in the garden and with internal and external painting. the well-being of our teams as they visit those we support from their own homes, the mental health and anxiety of those we currently support and those in absolute lockdown who we're not getting to see. For finances, we have experienced an immediate 25% reduction in funding and there is no certainty that the remaining will continue for the long-term future. For long-term aspirations of the charity to evolve, to become more sustainable and our needs of additional trustees who would bring much needed HR, governance and other skills. Thank you. Our story is coming today in the post. <laughs> or in fact, just now.
Mr. Wiseman. Oh, hello. Are you going to build a house? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm building it on the rocks over here. Why are you building on the rocks, Mr. Wiseman? Because I want to build on strong foundations. I wouldn't want my house falling over now, would I? Have fun, Mr. Wiseman. I will. Hello, Mr. Foreman. Are you going to the beach? Well, yes. Are you going to build a sandcastle? No. I'm going to build myself a new house. On the beach? Yes. Are you sure that's a good idea, Mr. Foreman? Of course. Have you seen the view? I'll be able to walk right outside my front door right onto the beach every morning. It's going to be perfect. Just perfect. Won't it be a little bit unsafe? <laughs> unsafe? No. <laughs> Sand dunner. <laughs> Have fun, Mr. Foreman. Oh, I will. Thanks. Yes, yes I have. Do you like it? Yes, it does look colourful and very sturdy. That's because I built it on the rocks with firm foundations. Have you finished your house, Mr. Foreman? Yes! Do you like it? Yes, it's really nice and you've got a lovely view. Would you like to see inside? I'd love to. He looks <sighs> cosy. It's a little bit cosy. <laughs> I'm gonna have the microwave over there, and um, I was thinking like a plasma screen, sort of behind me, and um, um, and my bed. Well, I'll sort it out later, right? And uh, oh, it's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Look at the view. Oh. It's nice, isn't it? 
champion. <laughs> Can we see inside your house, Mr. Wiseman? Yes, of course. <laughs> Welcome. Well, your house is very cosy, Mr. Wiseman, with a deceptively large interior. Oh no, it looks like there's a storm brewing. I don't like the look of those clouds. I hope Mr. Wiseman and Mr. Foreman are okay. Whew. I wouldn't want to be out in that tonight. Yes, I know. On the rock. <laughs> Hello, my name's Demelza. I've been living and working in Romania for the last 12 and a half years as a missionary. This is my husband, Chobby. Hello. We were married in March uh, this year. Uh, Chobby works in construction and renovation. We came over to the UK for a visit and uh, got stuck here, unable to get back at the moment. Um, but I'm working from home, as are most other people, uh, doing meetings online, uh, working on the computer, things that need to be done that I can help with from here, and uh, maintaining contact with the young people that I work with and offering support to them as and when I can. I've been asked to share a little bit with you about the situation in Romania and uh, at FCE, this organisation where I work during this time. Um, I live and work in the northwest of Romania, very close to the Hungarian border. And as with everywhere else, Romania also declared a state of emergency. Uh, declared that in the middle of March, and that's been going on now for two months. Um, the uh, number of cases of COVID-19 appears relatively low in Romania. But that's mostly due to a lack of testing available in the country and a healthcare system that's actually ranked the worst in Europe. Everything shut um, when the state of emergency was declared and that meant that the majority of FCE's activities also had to shut. That included the after school project, um, the day centre and the hygiene centre in the community. Roma community which was really unfortunate at the time when they need to be able to keep the cleanest they can we were not able to keep that open because it was a public uh, public place the situations really affected the Romanian people um, particularly concerning work uh, people have not been able to go to work they live very much off the salary that they have so if money is not coming in they don't have money to live off many uh, Romanian people work in factories and those factories have not been getting material in. Um, there's not been work available. And a number of people are not actually employed. They work um, unofficially or they work doing day-to-day -day work. And obviously if money isn't coming in, then that means that they are unable to buy food and unable to pay bills or rent. 
This is the same situation that some of the young people that I work with are facing. They've been very, very worried during this time how they're going to manage to pay things um, and not be kicked out and have nowhere to live. Um, and the same for the, the Roma and the, the poor families that we work with, just not having that day-to-day -day money to live on. In FCE, we have children and young people who are living in our residential homes and staff have been working 24-7 there, uh, working in two-week blocks. That's been very demanding and very difficult and tiring for them and at the same time very difficult and hard for these children and young people. They've not been able to go out anywhere um, and having that many in a house together has been, has been hard for them. During this time, FCE has been trying to offer support and help where it can. Um, we've been providing uh, grocery bags for the last couple of months where which has gone out to individuals and families there's been over a hundred grocery bags that have gone out still not clear uh, from this weekend exactly how things will pan out the state of emergency will come to an end go into a state of alert um, waiting to hear on how that will be to see how things will open how the day center can move forward how work in the Roma community can go forward I want to thank you for your continued support, both for myself and for the Foundation. Please pray, pray especially for the young people, um, that they'll be able to get back to work as soon as possible in a safe way, and also for those that have been left without a job, that they'll be able to find one as soon as possible. Please also pray for the poor families and the Roma people. Pray that the after-school project and the work in the community centre will be able to reopen as soon as possible and for the hygiene centre so that their basic needs and their education can be met. Thank you. The end of last week's service, Sarah quoted these words from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. They're known as the priestly blessing, which God commanded the priests to pray over the people of Israel. Now, if you're a Christian with internet access, which by definition, I guess you are, or you wouldn't be watching this, uh, then you'll almost certainly have come across a new song called The Blessing, uh, which is directly based on these words. There's a, a fabulous arrangement produced by a collaboration of 65 different churches from around the UK, including Woody's as a blessing over the country. Um, but I thought it'd be good if we could use it this morning in the context of our local community. So many people are experiencing difficulties at the moment with a pretty bleak outlook. As the church, we've got a message of hope because we know that whatever our circumstances, we have a God in whom we can trust. So if you can, let's stand up wherever we are and sing this together as a prayer and a blessing over our town. It's people, it's businesses, it's leaders, it's other churches, it's health centres, it's schools, it's care homes, and anyone else you can think of. Alternatively, just listen to the song and pray as you do. But let's also remember that God uses his people, the church, to be the practical agents of his blessing. So there's a challenge in this as well as to how we each play our part. The Lord bless you keep you make his face shine upon you be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace the Lord bless
May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and their children and their children and their children. May his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you. He is with you. He is with you in the morning, in the evening, in your coming, in your going, in your weeping, in rejoicing. He is for you. thank you that we live in this community, in this area. We pray for those in positions of leadership who have to make decisions that affect us all. Lord, give them wisdom, wisdom for this difficult time. We pray that for the Town Council, North Somerset Council and other local civic leaders. We pray it for Marvin Rees, the Mayor of Bristol and the City Council there. We pray it for Boris Johnson, the UK Government and the civil service leaders who have to implement many of these decisions, particularly as they wrestle with easing the lockdown and balancing issues of health and the economy. Lord, give them wisdom and insight, we pray. We pray for other members and parties in Parliament that they'll work to keep the government accountable, but in a positive way, in the best interests of the nation as a whole. Lord, be with them all, we pray. Thank you. And Lord, we pray for those <clears throat> amongst our church family who have any illness of any type. We pray that they will be comforted by your presence, Jesus, and that your peace will be evident to them in unimaginable ways. We pray for our family and friends who are suffering with illness. Please, Lord God, turn your face toward them, touch their lives with healing, and make yourself evident to them. We pray for those in our church family who are feeling particularly lonely at this time. Please, Lord God, provide them with a touch of kindness in whatever way is best for each of them. And Lord, we also want to lift before you those in our church family whose jobs are threatened by the current situation. Please, Lord God, protect them and provide for them in ways that honours your name as Jehovah Jireh, the God who provides. And finally, Lord God, please be with each of us in this pandemic and with uh, whatever um, way we need to hear from you help us lord to rely on you for the grace to live each day in a way that honors you yeah god i pray that through this time lord that you would teach each one of us more of you and more about ourselves helping us to realign our focus on you 
rather than on worldly possessions. I pray for a revival of the church. I pray for the expansion seen in the early church in Acts and that you come into the lives of the people around us, guiding more people to you, that we might see friends and family come to know you and that you, God, would help us to understand our individual roles in this. I also pray for countries further afield when the threat of the coronavirus is an addition to the problems already faced. I pray for Yemen. God, please bring your peace and protection and provision. I pray too for Kenya, that you prevent more flooding, that you would minimize the spread of cholera. Be with the people there, God. Let your presence be known among them. Finally, I pray for Burundi. In the wake of the election campaigns, election day and the results, that you would bring a new hope to the country, that more and more people would turn to you and experience your transcending peace. God, we pray for your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 Thanks to Smith for leading us in that. That was fab. And I'm going to hand over now to Carol, who's sharing us with our thought for today of the story. Good morning. It's lovely to be sharing worship with you this morning. Um, before I begin my talk, I would like just to read um, from Matthew 7, the account there of the story of the wise and the foolish builder. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into action is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. <clears throat> and this story that Jesus told wasn't told initially by him as a story in its own right. It came as the conclusion to his well-known Sermon on the Mount when he was giving some really radical teaching um, to his disciples and others who chose to listen. And that's what Jesus is referring to in this story when he talks about the, you know, those who've who've heard these words of mine they were that, that radical teaching the gospel of jesus christ that he had been teaching to the people and we know don't we the importance of making that choice making a choice between following christ and not um, there's a lovely verse in deuteronomy which says i set before you today life and pros prosperity or death and destruction. And that choice is ours. Jesus was also reminding us that um, storms come in life. They're no respecter of persons, and we can really see that clearly in this story when we see that the rains came, the floods rose, the winds battered the houses, and both the wise man and the foolish man experienced that same storm and they had to weather it. As a child, I um, lived in New Zealand and um, the first really bad storm that I can remember was when I was five. We were living in a farmhouse which had a corrugated iron roof and a beautiful veranda around it. And we went to bed in a very rainy, windy, noisy uh, time. And uh, just before dawn, I heard an almighty crash. And we were woken as a family. Um, and when, we went to, when I went to investigate, I discovered that a tree had come through our house, through the veranda, th broken the, the uh, French door, and had damaged the roof and had landed on my parents' bed. Fortunately, neither of them were injured. Um, and very soon, uh, with the help of local farmers, the tree was removed and repairs were made. 
and for us that was was a storm that we'll always remember but it wasn't life-changing or life-shattering and yet when i see often um about people's houses that have across the world that have been damaged i'm reminded of that so for them that is a, is a double double whammy really I have been thinking a little bit about the trials that I've experienced. And one of the things that has, I've been reminded of was many years ago when, as a family, we were looking to move house. One of our children was really struggling at school. Um, and in life, there were various other employment things going on, and life felt quite difficult. And I can remember saying to my neighbour, um, oh, I just, you know, I, all I'm trying to do is live a victorious Christian life. And, it, you know, nothing seems to be going right. I remember she just looked at me and said, oh, is that what you think? And I said to her, well, yeah, I just, I just want to be a really good example of Christ at work in, in, in people. And um, she said, well, I look at you and think, if I was going through the things that she is at the moment, I wouldn't even want to get out of bed. And in that moment, I was really challenged because what I realised was that despite me feeling all at sea with what was going on, God was walking that walk with me. And what my friend was seeing wasn't the way I was coping. She was seeing God at work in me, um, providing that firm foundation. In Isaiah, it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. And I think um, we know, we know that the storms of life come to us all. And it's very reassuring, isn't it? That with God's help, we do not need to be stricken with panic. We can be concerned, we can be worried, but it's about what we do with those concerns and worries. And I often think about that idea of God with me. We think about it a lot at Christmas, don't we? Emmanuel, God with us. But actually, I thank God that that isn't something that he reserves for Christmas time. Actually, God is with us all the time. And we carry the spirit of God with us wherever we go. And many years ago, I um, was diagnosed with a nasty illness. And um, in the process of diagnosis, I kept thinking, I'm too young for this. This can't possibly be. It will end up being fine. I'm not going to worry about it. When I actually received my diagnosis, I remember thinking, oh, I wasn't expecting that, but why not me? And I know that was God within me, helping me to deal with that. But the thought came to me immediately, and I can remember going sitting in the car afterwards as I left the consultation um, and was about to drive home and collect my children and do all the things that I had to do, um, thinking, actually, it's better that it's me because I've got God to walk with, through this with me. And therefore, I won't be doing it in my own strength. Times of difficulty, times of the, when those storms come, we develop a real intimacy with God. It's an opportunity to to draw into him isn't it 
at the moment as we're going through corona some of my parents some of the parents that i speak to say to me how much they're enjoying spending more time with their children there are also those that don't but and that but those that are saying you know it's been really good we've developed a really a stronger relationship and i feel as though that's an example of the way you know god is with us i'm also hearing people say at this time i'm developing a stronger relationship with god because i've got more time to spend with him and i think yeah we must never um underestimate the value of the benefits of difficult times I'm also, um, I know from my own experience of going through um, storms of life that it actually develops, has helped me to develop a bigger picture of kingdom life, of God's perspective on things and, and a, a bit more of an eternal picture. I know when I was quite ill um, that I was able, because I knew that I had an eternal God, I was able to think, well, I have to trust in God. What will be, will be. And he is with me every step of the way. And in that time, um, God met with me in incredible ways. And I knew that I could trust him for the future. One of the great gifts of um, being part of a, a, a church family is the value of being uplifted in prayer. Many, at the same time when I was very unwell, um, I was semi-conscious in hospital. Um, I'd had a number of brain hemorrhages. Colin had been asked to bring the boys to say goodbye to me at one stage. And it was fairly traumatic for us all. And um, well, at least for me, because I didn't know much about it. But I remember one Sunday morning, um, opening my eyes and suddenly think, thinking, oh, the world's, world's colourful again. And um, seeing my home group leader standing there at my bedside, reading scripture over me. And that was just such a profound moment. I'll never forget it. But that sense that she was there sharing the gospel, reading to me, um, praying for me. And that day I felt as if I was literally on a, cl a, cra a cloud of prayer. What I later discovered was that my church family at that time had actually canceled whatever they were planning for their Sunday morning service and had spent that time praying really interceding with god for me and that was just such a privileged place to be and i think we learn on both sides don't we um but what that has taught me is that we have a god a god who is amazing he's miraculous and we all have a part to play in uplifting one another in times of difficulty And the last thing I just want to leave with you is that idea, not an idea, it, it's real, is that sense of the peace that God brings into, into stormy situations. A peace that passes all understanding. A peace that is a real living presence. And when I've gone through difficult times, I have thought I don't ever want to forget what this is like. And yet, as time goes on and I get back to normal and I'm doing all the things I do, it's very easy to take God for granted. But he's a God who meets us in our point of need. My experience is that every time I ask him, he, he turns up. He gives me what I need. And I just want to end this morning um, this, uh, by just praying for us and leaving you with the words from Philippians. 
which say, the peace of God, which passes all understandings, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And Father God, I just thank you for this time we've spent together. Father, I just pray that you will presence yourself with us by your Holy Spirit. We're in our individual homes. And Lord, I just pray that your spirit will, will permeate the places where we are, that people that we talk to um, and that we live with will see God at work in us. Father, draw us to yourself, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. humble and raise them high. You choose the weak and make them strong. You heal our brokenness inside and give us life. The same love that set the captives free. The same love that opened eyes to see. He's calling us all by name. Calling us all by name. The same God that spread the heavens wide. The same God that was crucified. He's calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. You take the faithless one. And speak the words, you are mine. You call the cynic and the proud. Come to me now. The same love that set the captives free. The same love that opened eyes to see. He's calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. Same God that spread the heavens wide, the same God that was crucified is calling us all by name. You are calling us all by name. Oh, 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 oh,
Good morning, GVC. Greetings from Sat7 UK and from Cyprus. Sat7 is Christian television made by and for the people of the Middle East and North Africa. Today I would like to introduce you to Rita El Monea. Rita has been with Sat7 for over 20 years and she stepped up to the role of Sat7's international CEO in April last year. Rita's personal story starts in Lebanon, in the Civil War in the 1970s, a terrible war that lasted for 15 years until 1990. I was born during a time of war and hardship. My childhood was filled with violence as I grew up during the dark days of the Civil War in Lebanon. All I can remember of my childhood is insecurity, fear and death. I lost my mother at the age of seven and was terrified to lose my father too, as he was an active member in the Christian militia. Frequently, he would come home weary and covered with the smell of gunpowder and long hours of fighting. He often left with tears in his eyes and a rifle on his side, dressed in his green military outfit that I hated and still hate, as it reminds me of destruction and death. I was born in a Christian family, but at the age of 15, I decided to have a personal relationship with God. I guess I wanted answers to all of my questions. Why I had to be born in a country of war? Why I had to live without a mother? Why I had to experience fear in my early years? Why, why, why? What I did not know then is that God was preparing me for a higher calling where I could not only feel compassion for people in hardship, especially young children, but deeply empathize with their situation. I can now share their pains, understand their agony and walk their walk. And this could only be achieved by living and experiencing the same hardship as the people in North Africa, Palestine, Iraq, and numerous other countries across the region. What I know is that God is always at work and we never know where or when this plant will grow. At Sat7, our role is to sow, to plant and even water the seed, but His Holy Spirit is going to make the plant grow. From young children watching our Bible Heroes programs to learning their rights on our game show puzzle, children and youth are a major focus of Sat7's ministry. Our desire is to fulfill the Bible verse, start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Proverbs 22.6 It was Rita's vision for the children of the Middle East and North Africa which led to the founding of our Sat7 Kids channel in 2007, now watched by literally millions of children and young teenagers across the region. We also asked Rita to tell us something of how Sat7 and the Middle East are coping with COVID-19 and the lockdown. Middle Easterners seem specially concerned about at least two aspects of the current situation. How long will this go on for and what are the financial implications for them as individuals and families? There are also worries about how the pandemic can be stopped in high density cities like Cairo and the refugee camps in Syria, Turkey and Jordan or in war zones like Yemen and Libya. These are places where social distancing is not an option or the health services were already overloaded before the present crisis. Our Sat7 offices and studios in Cyprus, Egypt, Lebanon, Turkey and the UK have their staff working as much as possible from home. Minimum production crews are coming in for live shows which are all continuing except from the UK where there are key personnel needing to self-quarantine. Production crews are all wearing masks and gloves and many of them are now needing to multitask to compensate for reduced crew sizes. Live church services have mostly been replaced with a single pastor speaking to camera. There have been many more responses than usual from our audiences. Turkish church leaders have been recording messages of hope from their homes for us to broadcast. Algerian children are creating do-not-be-afraid spots to share on air. 
Sat7 Egypt have begun a weekly live program on Mondays using social media to provide opportunities for greater interaction and prayer with our audiences. Other channels and studios are taking similar such new initiatives. Please pray for our teams in the Middle East that they will have wisdom and creativity in both the way they work and their ability to present messages of hope to all at this unprecedented time. Let's pray for Sat7 right now. Father God, we pray for the Sat7 teams across the world, making your love visible to the people of the Middle East and North Africa. May their work bring joy to our viewers in the midst of fear and uncertainty. And Lord, we pray for our viewers across the region. Through our programmes, may our viewers find real joy in the Lord in the midst of conflict, poverty, persecution and despair, especially in these tough times of COVID-19 lockdown. And Lord, we pray for our SAT7 staff team here in the UK, having to work in their own homes, some self-isolating, serving our supporters and our donors. May they do so efficiently and with good communication at this time. We bring these, our prayers, in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So to find out more about SAT7, uh, visit our website for more information, www.sat7uk.org. And we'd also like to give you a free photo book, uh, which will encourage you in, with incredible stories of Christians in the Middle East. It's called Joy in the Midst and tells of those who find Jesus in their lives and what a difference it makes. You can order this by going to our website www.sat7uk.org slash joy. Oh, and look out for an email because I'm sending one to you on Church Suite this afternoon. Hi everybody. As well as having a joint evening service on Pentecost Sunday, the 31st of May, we'll also be having our own service at, at the normal time of 11 o'clock, followed by um, our Zoom coffee together. And it's that morning service I just want to quickly talk a little bit about uh, now. We'd love contributions from people, video contributions from people, testimonies, encouragements, how God has answered prayer. Uh, what you feel God is saying during this time. And it would be great if you could video those um, and send them to Sarah. We we want this to be a, 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 an open Sunday, in a sense, with lots of people contributing. So again, if you feel that God has said something to you particularly, if you had a real answer to prayer, which you feel might encourage other people, please send it in. And we would love to include it on our service um, on the 31st. Thank you very much. Well, that's all uh, this morning for our morning service at GVC. Just want to thank very much indeed everyone who's taken part in our service this morning and especially you. We thank you for uh, watching and participating in our time together. Just to say that if you're watching uh, on a Sunday morning, then at 12 o'clock immediately after this uh, uh, broadcast, then uh, we're going to be meeting together as a church via Zoom and uh, this week we're going to be celebrating uh, communion and Dave will be leading us with that so there'll be an opportunity uh, quickly to uh, uh, have a cup of tea or coffee prepared and also to uh, uh, prepare your communion stuff ready for the, the meeting. Liz and I uh, in our devotions this morning read Psalm 67. It's a wonderful psalm of blessing. Let me read it as a blessing for us all. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. 
May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. An amazing psalm and a blessing to conclude our meeting today. May God bless you and may God keep you safe and secure in him. God bless you. Bye. Worship with you. So we'll see you again, same time, same place, next week.